Thank you. Thanks for coming. So there, there's a lot to sort of unpack with this movie, obviously, but perhaps the most natural starting point is that this was a role that you sought out, and maybe it'd be helpful to hear a little bit about, you know, what compelled you to go to look for a role like this, and, and um, you know, what you were hoping to get out of the experience. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, I heard from my agent that uh, Florian was going to be doing The Sun. I, I knew Florian because we almost did a play together. I, I didn't know him, but I knew of his work. Um, but that didn't work out because of timing. And I'd just seen The Father, which I absolutely adored. And uh, my agent said some of those magic words that you say to an actor, which was there's a couple of other actors being talked about, <laughs> um, which always gets, uh, gets me fired up. Um, and of which I was not one. And uh, so I said, well, listen, I really want to read the play. I read the play that day and I adored it. I, I, it literally just got me in the guts. And the story, what it was saying, I, I, I felt, even though the play was written five or six years ago, now had even more relevance than ever. Um, you know, we're living in a time, particularly post-pandemic, where... You know, it's an epidemic in, of mental health crisis uh, all over the world. So I felt an urgency for the story. I felt an urgency for the part. And so I just emailed Florian um, and I just laid my cards on the table. I think I used the word dancing. I said, I hear you may be dancing uh, with someone else and uh, I'm not the kind of guy to cut in on a dance. So if you are, uh, I wish you well. Um, and I look forward to seeing the movie. That's not true. I probably wouldn't have seen the movie. Um, and he emailed me three hours later and said that, uh, no, I don't know what you've heard, but I'm speaking to no one. Um, I would love to chat with you. So we Zoomed the next day. And about seven minutes into that Zoom, he offered me the part. But I remember feeling a, a, a fear, equal parts fear of getting the part and not getting the part as I went to take that Zoom because... As I said, uh, I think it's a story that needs to be told. I felt an urgency to play the part, but I, I also knew the demands of the role and what it was going to bring up and what, how difficult it would be. Um, so, yeah. Well, I think a lot of people, when they watch a, a film like this, they can't help but think about people that they know, maybe relatives and so forth, because it has to do with the, sort of the nuances of these individual relationships and how we don't always ask the right questions in, in the right moments, obviously. And I wonder you know, what that was like for you to sort of inhabit the role of somebody who wasn't always making the right choices for his family, as we see in the film, and, and what kind of an impact it had on you emotionally to, to play that. Well, I'm a parent, uh, so I've made a lot of mistakes, uh, as other parents will be here, uh, will say the same thing. So that's something universal. Um, I have never experienced a mental health crisis myself, individually, of that kind. But of course, I know many people close to me who have. We all do, uh, whether in our immediate family or extended family or friends. Um, we all know that. And what I loved about this story was that it was as opposed to The Father, where Florian got you inside the head of Anthony Hopkins' character, imagining what it would be like to live with that kind of loss of stability or the dementia. This, he's putting you in the minds of the people around the this 17-year-old boy, uh, young man who's going through a crisis and imagining what it's like to deal with that. And I know that fear. Uh, as a parent, we all know those fears. Um, it feels very precarious and it's so hard to know what is a phase, oh, this is normal 17-year-old behaviour, or oh, hang on, no, this is an, a problem, we need to deal with it. This, particularly around mental health, it seems there's so much ignorance and shame and guilt around it that somehow as a parent you're meant to know what to do, you're the one who should solve things. Um, and I think there's a beautiful line that Florian has in this, uh, love is not always enough. And, and I think in these situations that's true, we have to have a village of people helping us to get through. Um, so I think all of that really resonated with me as a parent. Um, and I hope and pray that the movie will start conversations because um, we desperately need to have them. One last question, then I'll open it up to the audience. The last scene there where we see everything kind of pour out of you is obviously a very complicated tone to hit. And on some level, it's 
what we've been waiting for you to sort of get around to the whole film. So I wonder what it was like for you to do a scene like that, knowing that, you know, in all these other scenes, you're, you're keeping so much bottled up. Yeah, he's, I mean, it's a beautiful scene, uh, beautifully written scene. And you're right, I think he's desperately trying to fix things and uh, he's taking it all on himself out of guilt, partly out of his own childhood trauma of having a father that abandoned him. So he's determined not to repeat that himself. Um, and yet in that final scene, I think you really just see the raw um, emotion that has been lurking all the film, but even in the three years that we imagine passed um, that pre prior to that. And I really trusted Florian a lot. I had no idea, we, we never rehearsed anything. He did want to rehearse. Um, I had no idea, normally I'll ask, you know, how are you gonna shoot this? Where should we, can we start in close, whatever. But there was no, and no watching the monitor. He didn't want any of us to watch the monitor at all. So it was really an exercise of trust. And uh, I think we maybe did 17 or 18 takes of that. I have no idea, but it, my father had passed away about three days before. And I remember writing in my diary that morning the names of every member of the crew um, because I knew I, I needed their help to get through it. Um, and the whole movie, in a way, I'm telling you that story because I think the movie itself the story itself and my experience of acting in that has taught me to, I think, open up to those people around me when I'm working. It's okay to rely on them, to look at them in the eye. I mean, they didn't know what I was thinking when I was looking them in the eye, but I was, in a way, imploring all of them, sound guy, everyone, for their help. And that got me through. Um, and then I just, Florian, there was no like, this is totally where we're going or this is where we start, this is where we finish. It was just, let's just roll and see where we go. Take some questions from the audience. Just shoot your hand in the air. Oh, just one, one last thing. I remember feeling my father there in the room. Uh, distinctly, not, not at the beginning. I'm looking over there because that's where I could see him, uh, where I was standing. And that was, yeah, very heartening. That's very powerful. Yes, sir. Um, as a recent, uh, as like a writer that just recently kind of came into really being a writer from the stage of like wanting to be a writer and trying to like resonate, you know, with a character of this age, um, like I'm also thinking of a similar like movie from the past decade that kind of has like similar plot points to where the son in that situation is also an aspiring writer that never really realizes that kind of potential, um, you know, before he comes to a similar end that Nicholas's character had. And so I was wondering if you kind of like had any thoughts as to why writing as like a practice or like profession or passion might like tie into this like extreme vulnerability in this kind of character, or if like you see like a link like in between those uh, I don't know, kind of like, I don't want to say like personality types, but like modes of existence or something like that. Um, I'm sure, it, I wish Florian was here to answer that for you, uh, also sorry. as the writer himself. Um, and he was a young writer, started out very young, um, wrote books, novels, then plays. I think he's written 14 plays. Uh, the Father is an adaptation, he, he, and he's always worked with the Christopher Hampton. It's worth uh, um, mentioning extraordinary Christopher Hampton. I, I, for me, what I thought of whenever I think of a writer is the hardest thing as a writer is to find your own voice, to be a, that, that authentic voice that is you, and it feels to me to be such a um, metaphor for launching into life, who you are, who you want to be, what you have to say. And the beautiful thing about being a writer is your work is about what you have to say, about your experience and what you see and what you feel. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful profession. It's incredibly vulnerable. And I think the courage it takes to do it is extraordinary. Um, people always talk about actors or you're getting up on stage in front of everyone, but I think there's something even more intimate and courageous about being a writer and um, 
it's a precarious thing, isn't it? Because you're talking about your sensitivities, your vulnerabilities, your views, everything, and you're putting it out there for everyone to see. And so I think it's beautiful that Nicholas, that's what he wanted to do. Um, tragically, he never got to do it. Um, so anyway, I, I just applaud you. Uh, congrats for putting it up your hand and saying you want to be a writer, just that act alone takes a lot of courage and I wish you all the best. Yes, ma'am, right here. Can you talk a little bit about how your interaction with the other actors, Laura Dern and um, Nicholas and your second wife, how that helped you develop your own character in mm. relation to them? Yeah, uh, thanks. It's a great question. We didn't, we, as I said, we didn't do a lot of rehearsal. We we met and we spent some time. Um, Vanessa Kirby and I spent a bit of time together before just to feel familiar with each other. Uh, she spent a lot of time with the baby, by the way. Um, uh, Zen, also with Zen, Zen McGrath, who's from Melbourne, um, whose father is my age and we know people in common. So it was interesting when they came to, uh, and, and Laura, uh, is, Laura Dern is literally, I think, one of the greatest actors we have alive right now, and it's extraordinary to work with her. It's like every scene she turns, it's like a home run. It's like she hits a home run every single take, and it's it's a joy to work with all of them. And then there's Anth Sir Anthony Hopkins. So, yeah, it was an embarrassment of riches, but we had COVID protocols uh, very strict at the time. So we were somehow sequestered, which was really awesome. So we were a family on set, and then we were sort of a family staying in the hotel in the evening, having dinners together, particularly, and my family was there, my immediate family. So Laura would hang out, and we'd hang out with Zen, and that time was really lovely. Um, but it, again, Zen didn't, uh, sorry, Florian didn't want us to rehearse, so we just relied on that time, being together, getting to know each other, and then having trust when we were in the room. But they're all extraordinary. I have to tell you a little story about Anthony Hopkins. Because I was so excited to work with him. And he apparently was so excited that he turned up at 5 a.m. at the location. Um, that he had a hotel that was 10 minutes around the road. Uh, there was something he has a certain amount of hours in his day and they were terrified they weren't going to get the day because it's a six and a half page scene and there's a, that scene where he gets the drink so there's two things happening. So the night before he said, oh, I don't like the hotel so he moved into the city and his hours accounted from when he leaves his hotel. So they were all freaking out and he then was so excited. He woke up at three. He hadn't acted in 18 months or something because of the pandemic that he turned up at 5 a.m. The only other person there was the locations person. <laughs> and so the clock was ticking before anyone had arrived. So by the time Florian turned up on set, he was four hours into his day and he was freaking out. So I think we rolled film at 8.30 in the morning and we, we did the scene at the dining room table and there was, it was a wide, there were two cameras, so there was a wide shot and like a medium shot. And I remember the first day he say, uh, uh, Sir Anthony, would you like to rehearse? And he says, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and the first take was so good. Uh, he said, OK, let's just move in. So all of a sudden the cameras are moving in. Within an hour, his side of the six-page scene was done. We turned around. We did my side. Like it was 10.30 in the morning. We were done with the scene. And we were ready to move on. And, and, and Anthony just said to Florian, do you mind if I go again? I'd like to go again. So we moved the cameras back around again. And I said to Florian, I said, it was so good what he did. What do you think? And he said, I think he just misses acting. I think he just wanted to do it again. So it was only two takes or did you do more? Oh, no, we did more than two takes. I think he had three sizes. and But the, the wide, he just, did, you know, it was so good. Um, he, just did, he just did that. And, and here's another thing about Anthony. For six months that he had the offer to do the film, he got an email, sorry, Florian got an email from Anthony every single day about the character. And uh, he said, I had exactly the same thing on the father. Obviously in the father, he's in every frame of the movie. Here he's in one scene. He said, same amount of effort, same amount of emails. That's, if any young actor's watching this, that's the best lesson you'll ever get. Uh, yes, I see a hand right here. Can I presume, do I presume correctly that Florian Zimmer wrote the play in French, it was called Le Fils? Uh, 
Uh, I'm sure it's called, the, yeah, probably Le Fils. Yeah, so, yeah. so was the play um, set in, in Fr France originally? Yes, the play was set in France, and he wanted to make it New York because in his mind, New York was the cross, cross and crossroads of the world. And he felt that the issue that was being talked about was universal, and he didn't want it to feel provincial or, oh, that's an issue that happens in that country, but it wouldn't happen here. And so he felt, that's why in New York. So you've answered the first part of my question. The second part of my question is, to what degree was there, were there changes or adaptations made from the play to the screenplay? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, most obviously the scene with Anthony Hopkins um, was not in the play. Um, I think you'd struggle to find an actor who would turn up to do just five minutes on stage every night at a play. Um, but he really, he'd always wanted that. And it's a beautiful, for me, a beautiful part of the film because you obviously walk into a film called The Sun, you see the 17-year-old boy struggling and everyone talking about this boy the whole time for about 45 minutes and all of a sudden that scene happens and you realise, oh, I think Peter's the son. And we're all still, we're all children. No matter how old we are, we carry the scars, the pain, we carry our past with us and no matter how much we consciously are determined not to repeat um, the sins that were sort of placed on us, they somehow come out and it takes great courage to actually stop that wildfire, that idea that we are a bridge between our past and what we pass on to our uh, descendants is key to the film. Um, so that's one. Obviously the flashbacks are not possible in the play, um, you know, with the young boy in France and uh, the swimming, they're the most notable changes. Yes, ma'am, right here. Hi, I was wondering um, in what ways, and it kind of ties into what you were talking about, um, the the movie speaks to society's expectations of men and, and how they perform in their roles as a father or as a son and kind of how you... Sorry, I missed a little bit. How society... Sorry. Uh, what, in what ways you thought the movie and your role spoke to society's expectations of men? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think there is, in the story, a patriarchal element to it that you see passed on from Anthony's character and to my character, obviously with the son, this idea of boys don't just become men, you have to make them into men. And somehow girls become women, but you have to make boys into men. And we have to push them, cajole them, toughen them up, harden them up, and become something, which is clearly what Anthony's character, my father, did to me, and what I'm wrestling with um, as a father now, wanting to connect, wanting to be there, wanting to put my arm around him, but also wondering, hang on, is this the bit where I'm meant to, I think this is the bit where I'm meant to push him. This is just a phase, and I know you have to go to school, this is what's expected, you have to do this, and he's somehow in between, and that's where I think the, the screenplay is really referring to, um, in particular, male expectations, which thankfully I think are changing. Was that the only part of the question? Was there something else? I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Yes, uh, right up here. Uh, hi, Hugh. Hello. Um, I was wondering, um, as you were preparing for the role of the film, um, especially also with regards to this uh, rather intense scene at the clinic, um, what your thoughts are on, uh, say, psychiatric practices um, the last uh, decades and also, you know, where this this area is, is heading towards. Um, yeah, and also, um, especially when it comes to uh, such a fragile case, um, you know, we're talking about a, a teenage uh, boy. Um, what your opinion, your personal opinion would be on uh, the practices and uh, whether you see um, uh, potential for improvement 
and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, yeah, that that scene in particular, uh, we did. I did a lot of research around that treatments. What happens? What happens when your uh, child enters a government-run facility? And what are your choices? What are not your choices? Um, it's quite complicated, but certainly from I don't know. Uh, for Florian, I know he did a lot of research and that those situations literally do happen like that. Um, you know, I think when a lot of people are watching the film or reading it, or as I was I, I was like, you, I feel very vocal about what should be done and what should happen, but I think when you understand the characters and where they come from, and it's key for me in that scene, it's the second time you hear the word abandoned. Um, once by Laura Dern at the very first scene. She says, you can't just abandon him and you see my character really bristle at that. Because if there's one thing he's not gonna do is do the same thing that happened to him. So when his son says, dad, you cannot abandon me, you feel that pull for him that is so strong um, that he doesn't think clearly. And these decisions are so hard. And I, I think what Florian was trying to do is rather than comment on the psychiatric practices of the day, it's more, we don't really know what to do. Uh, we're still in the early days of understanding mental health. Um, we don't talk about it a lot. There's a lot of shame around it. And also you're in the middle of a crisis. It's, it, it, these decisions aren't happening in a cool, calm way. They're happening when everyone is in absolute crisis and terrifying, debilitating fear um, that they might, you might lose your child. So it's understandable. I don't really think it's actually that valuable, if you don't mind, of me talking about my own personal views of psychiatry or where practices are at. Um, clearly, in terms of society, this is an area that we're just beginning to understand. And I think the point of the movie is to admit that and for parents to admit that we don't really know what to do, particularly in these types of situations. And that's probably right to admit, and it's okay not to know. And we do need to um, rely on other people, professionals sometimes. As, again, as he says, love is not always enough. I'm gonna take the last question right up here. Uh, just make sure to get that microphone, please, which is still making its way down the aisle. Hi, so um, one thing that I kind of thought was thinking about like throughout the whole thing is like when Nicholas was saying like directly like to his dad's like hey the divorce is the reason why uh it's like I'm in pain I think I just kind of like wanted to like learn more about like what kind how you like how you felt about like that whole aspect of the script like with him like being so direct about what hurts him and like how like your character kind of reacted to it yeah, you know, one of the first scenes when I'm with Vanessa Kirby at the kitchen, we're discussing whether he could come and stay with us. I say, I, I feel guilt. I feel guilty. I I left. You know, I have to admit that that was my choice, and I've left. And he does keep saying that, and it does get brought up. But then later in the scene with Laura Dern, he he kind of says, "But it's not just that." And it's it's easy to want to have a concrete answer and a reason. In fact, we desperately want to know as parents, as human beings, there's something we don't understand of someone we love. Give me the reason why, then I can fix it. And I think one of the most important things and what the film is bringing up is it's complex. Was it the divorce? Probably partly. Could it have been chemical? Could it have been genetic? Could it have been something else? Could it have been a whole lot of factors that are actually impossible to know? Um, and admitting that is probably the first step that we don't really know. And um, what Florian deliberately does is not give an outright reason for why Nicholas is struggling. Um, that's, that's very deliberate on his part. I've heard him talk about it and we talked about it on set. He wanted it to be ambiguous, um, that everyone around is clasping at straws, grasping at straws and trying to work things out. Um, and because of their own personal um, backstories and limitations, inabilities to see what is happening. I mean, if you look at it, 
you can Nicholas is telling him he's in pain. This is he's just he's trying to say to him, I need help. I don't know what's going on, and yet my character is really like, no, 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 no. I, I I'll know. I'll help you. I can fix it. I can be the one to help you and save you. I will redeem myself. I'll redeem my father, and the, all these things get in the way. Um, but in the end. Admitting that we don't know the answer is probably the first step. So uh, before we wrap, the distributor has asked me to note that um, they're working closely with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Health, Health in connection with the release of The Sun. And uh, if you want more information, you can visit NAMI, N-A-M-I dot org. And The Sun opens on November 25th at AMC Lincoln Square, Regal Union Square, and Cinema 123. So you can spread the word that way as well. Thank you for sticking around. You thank you for being here.